I'm Maddie. I'm Kristen. And this is the We Should Noodles podcast. Yay! Episode 27. We looked it up. Our first of 2022. Which feels crazy. Crazy, crazy. I feel like we haven't podcast in a million in years. ages. So well, it, it's been a year. <laughs> it was last year. It's yeah. not been a year. Sorry, but it's been since I always messed up. You tried the dad joke. I did. You do it all the time. But... I love that joke. <sighs> Um, anyway, hi, this is a knitting podcast. Yeah. Most of the time. Um, knitting, crochet, crafting. Do crochet today? I do, actually. I have a crochet FO and oh, a crochet you whip. Do. Mm-hmm. I forgot. Okay, so we do some crochet, and I just bought my first cross stitch. So <gasps> That's exciting. I've been eyeballing cross stitch. I'm um, excited. I kind of want to try it. There's been such good stuff lately. Yeah. I forgot who I was talking to, someone on Instagram recently. We were talking, I said, hey, I got my first cross stitch, because she has a lot of cross stitch yeah. on her page. And I was like, I got my first one. And she's like, oh my gosh, wait till you get into hand dyed floss. I was like, what? <laughs> didn't Pardon even, you? I didn't even think about that. I told my mom last night about the cross stitch and um, she's like, oh my gosh, I have all my stuff from when I did that in the nineties. I was like, what? You uh, kept it for 30 years? She's like, yeah, I loved it. Everything. I know. <laughs> That's awesome. So she's going to find it. And we're going to find some weird 90s cross stitch. <laughs> I love that. I messed up what I was knitting on already. So I'm going to switch. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. So um, we like to talk about knitting. We're two best friends from Conway, Arkansas. Yeah. And yeah, we just like crafting. So follow us for some craziness right now. We don't have our ad like from Buddy last time. Maybe he'll make it apparent. Hello everyone. Now is an opportunity to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel because it benefits these wonderful ladies and it's free. So make sure you guys check. Just click the red button, make it turn gray. Hello Max. And support the channel. That was kind of a weird start. Was it? I don't know. I feel like I'm out of it today. We are out of it today. We just got off both of us <clears> being <throat> quarantined, which was super duper fun. Um, we don't like being separated. It's not our favorite. Start. It was, yeah, it was rough. I feel like it I was, was not only separated from her, but I was quarantining at home because my husband had COVID. Um, and I, we were staying away from each other. He stayed in that half of the house and I stayed in this half of the house. Very then, lonely. Like when I put on my mask to deliver him meals. Um, <laughs> it was such a bummer. So it's just like, I don't know. I walked a ton. I started walking every day since our last podcast, which I feel really good about. I did the math and la- over the last seven days, like ending yesterday, I walked 50 miles. <clears throat> That's so many miles. That's like like biblical my <laughs> my dog is looking skinny as all get out yeah that dog is snatched and hopefully soon <laughs> i look skinny as all get out and i by association <laughs> exactly <laughs> so i'll be walking 50 miles in a week no thank you um yeah so that's been fun i'm actually gonna go for a walk with my older brother after this podcast and i'm really enjoying that so everyone says walks help your mental health i thought that was dumb that is accurate information <laughs> <laughs> I actually used to say that at the beginning of quarantine. I was like, let's go for a walk. Like a mental health walk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm enjoying it. Now I'm like, no, stay in your room. <laughs> um, anyway, shall we get started on the knitting? Yeah. Let's talk about our FOs. What we're wearing. Um, we're not going to model them right now. Let's just talk about it. Yeah. And then we'll do like a little fashion strut later and I'll just oh, clip it in. Oh, fine. Over our talking about it. I so. Block mine. I think it's going to look better when it's blocked. And like sits like with I don't know maybe it won't because your still kind of rolls a little just a little but I didn't but aggressively great. block mine I didn't pin it or anything even at the ripping so this know. is the Radvent cardigan by Amba O'Brien we don't have to do this I've already said we're gonna clip it in <laughs> I'm doing it anyway <laughs> we started this in December for Advent season we both had different Advents yes mine is the Stress Knits Advent um from this year and yours Wooly Mama Yarn Co oh, so yes. She's from Manchester in the UK, and she's from Michigan. Detroit, I think, or Chicago. Detroit. Detroit. I think they just moved to Detroit. But very different vibes. It's the exact same pattern. Love. I'm loving it. Mine has one rainbow on this sleeve. (laughs) And the other sleeve is just madness. And then Maddie's is much more of a cohesive piece, but it's Well, I mean, not completely. But yeah, it's it's a similar... I mean, yours is all one vibe, too. It is. We're just different vibes. It is. We're different people. (laughs) I love this cardigan. I still need to finish weaving in my ends and blocking it, but I finished it before the new year. Yeah, you finished it. I just don't remember when. And then I put it down and didn't weave in the ends because we were at a knit night at a Starbucks Mm -hmm. and you finished it. Yep. I love it. So yeah. 
I finished mine yesterday. This is the first time I've worn it too. Um, I wore it today because it's great. My sleeves are a little bit long. The pattern was kind of weird. If I know that we inspired some people to knit it. Um, and when we had just started, it was super easy. It was like a super easy pattern. Overall, easy it to was follow. easy to knit, but yeah, the pattern wasn't easy to follow. It took some, some thinking. Some yeah, it's a little bit of brain power. I mean, not, it was, some of it was almost not charted, but it was like a chart. And then the other was written and it was all for all the sizes, but your chart was for your size. And there was different, you know, striping techniques basically. Yeah. So, so you had to work off two documents at the same time to do it right. And right. It strange. So I would call it still a beginner pattern. Yeah. Um, and it was so quick really. It looks, yes. We both did it in right about a month. Neither of us were far over. Mine I think was six weeks total. I think Ooh, I calculated You started today. a little late. I mean, I started like a week late and okay. I finished two weeks late. So I oh. think it was like five, six weeks. Um, That's not bad at all. Not bad at all, especially for me um, because a lot of the back part of this was purling, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. which is not my fastest. No, so mine either. we really like this pattern though. Like in, overall, it was really, really good. I enjoyed so, it and I think I'm going to wear it. I don't know. I don't have anything else like it, which I like. It's not often I knit something that's like completely outside my normal wardrobe. I think I had, I mean, I wore it today and I think I had 10 compliments and I only saw like 10 people. No way. So like my employee so at fun. work yeah. and every single person that I drove through in the coffee line, I'm like, oh my gosh, your sweater's so cool. Like yelling at it through my window. So oh, I was like, that's so fun. Thanks. I like it. I don't feel like I'm going to get those kinds of compliments. I think you will. Because so bold. It's, it's very bold. So yeah, if this arm's hanging out the window and you see it, you're like, like oh my hey God. Girl. Um, I love yeah. Love it. Do so. you guys remember that children's book about the girl who, um, like, if she doesn't eat lima beans, she, like, gets covered in stripes? What? I can't remember what it's called. I loved this book. I used to read it to my daycare class all the time. And it's like, she loves lima beans, but she pretends she doesn't love lima beans. And... Um, to like fit in because lima beans aren't cool, and and, and then, then she, she becomes covered in stripes. Yes, okay, I'm gonna look it up. I've never heard that. What you're about, about to talk about? I'm gonna look this up. I I'm just showing you guys how much I have left. This was a 24 skein advent, and I don't know. That's gonna be like, uh, maybe a third of my yarn is left over, plus a lot of the full skein. So it's like a pretty good. Like I think I could get another one of these sweaters out of what I have in this bag. So <laughs> I did use Arkansas Yarn Co. for my mane. Yeah. You use stress it. I use stress it. It's perfectly adequate for my mane. I weighed my cardigan when it was finished and I think I used three, the cardigan itself weighs 315 grams. Hmm. So that's, I did the size 44, um, I think. So that's I did the size This is the 54. book, A Bad Case of Stripes. I've never seen that. That really? probably came out after I was I love this book. A it's child. so <laughs> stinking cute. Why it, did you think of this? That's because so of the funny. stripes. So, <laughs> the rainbow. She's really cute. When it was this published? Um, that's cute. We're striped. We're very different. Published in 98. So I was like 12. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah, have been reading that. You didn't teach daycare, so you wouldn't have been. <laughs> and you would have been too. Yeah. So that would have been like a good, like, bigger child. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love that book. Love, love it too. Love so cute. So love our sweaters. Lo yeah, mm -hmm. we recommend this pattern. So if you have yes. questions, if you're knitting it now, when you get to the part where it's a little confusing, let us know. Oh, um, yes. There is a section where it tells. <laughs> I, I sewed up my hole. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but there's a section where it tells you to cut your yarn, even though you're going to use the same color yarn in that next section. And I was like, why would I do that? I'm just going to use my yarn. Cut your yarn. <laughs> Otherwise, you get a gaping hole. And there was just a huge hole, and I had to use one of my ends to basically, like, shut it. So I did it on one arm, and yeah. the other arm, I was like, that was dumb. I'm just going to cut my yarn, which was so smart, because it was way easier. Because you have to weave it anyway I'm to close your hole. I'm so lazy about weaving it in. I hate it. So Except you're the one with all your ends woven in. I know. I had, I had, it was like, I did not knit a stitch yesterday, because I had to weave in my ends. Like, that was yeah. my goal. I don't think I knit yesterday either, but it's because I had my niece and nephew here all day. Yee. So, I played with them instead. So, that's what we're wearing, which kind of leads us into our FOs, which are finished objects. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I have some finished objects, but they're mostly, I mean, I finished this this week and she finished that a couple weeks ago. Yeah, whatever. Um, but I pretty much all my finished objects are gone. So shall we have a picture parade? Yeah, talk through okay. what you remember and you're in my into your pictures. Right? Okay, so I finished Nurse Longarm's sweater. If you don't know Nurse Longarm's, my mom is going through treatment for cancer and one of her nurse Sis has long arms. <laughs> Wait, I would never have that information. And she, my, she had mentioned a, about how she'd always wanted a knit sweater when she saw my mom. So my so mom was sweet. like, my daughter will make you one. Don't you worry. <laughs> I was like, excuse me? So my mom brings me back her measurements for her nurse. And it's like, you're going to knit my nurse a sweater. I'll pay for the yarn. And I was like, that's, that's not the part I'm worried about. <laughs> I said, that is hours of work, you nutcase. But I did it anyway because I love my mom. And she loves that nurse. So her name is Lisa and she is a cancer nurse and she deserves all the praise in the world. She is an amazing person and is just a light in my mom's life. So yes, she got a sweater. It was green. Here's a picture of it blocking because I haven't received a picture of her wearing it yet. But um, her and my mom will chat back and forth until I get one of those because <laughs> I want my FO pictures this year. Mm -hmm. So I made a flax worsted weight Aurora Heather by Knit Picks is the color and I have extra of that. So I'm going to use it to make a two T sweater for Micah, maybe three T so he can wear it in yes, the winter. He into it. He's a big boy. So I'm like four T. I don't know. I think it's like two to four is the next stage up. So I'm going to knit another flax except for I'm going to modify it to seek it. And he's gonna have a little cardigan. Don't I you think? Love that idea. I think yes. so too. Maybe a hoodie. Like maybe I'll add a hood to it. I'm just gonna look yeah. at modifications. I like using the flax pattern because it's free. First of all, um, it's very easy to modify, and I know that the sizing makes sense. Mm -hmm. Also, I really like raglan increases. Like this is cool, the sweater. But I love the structure of like a raglan increase, and the flax is just so easy. Like easy, yeah. memorizable, and I've done it so many times. times. Yeah. <laughs> so all yeah, totally recommend the flax pattern. Um, I know that there are a lot of other raglan sweaters and free raglan sweaters. Yeah. And I've never even tried. Well, Tin Can Knits is so reliable mm -hmm. with their patterns. Like that's the first one you and I went to for a, like a pullover sweater. For I think we both started with baby stuff. Yeah. For that. I've only knit it twice, I think, and both in infant sizes. You've knit it a couple times for adults now. Yes. But. Um, <laughs> It's a good one. It's really good. Yeah. So there's a picture of that. I also finished socks. I brought them, but they're dirty. So I'll put a picture of them blocked. Um, but these are them. I've worn them already twice. And I stepped in cat throw up. Stop it. I know. What a bummer. So they're going to get washed. But they are Rising Tide Fiber Co. Here's a picture of them better. <laughs> um, Rising Tide Fiber Co. was having a military sale yeah she it was a sale she like specifically marketed for military spouses and i took the bait immediately i bought things <laughs> for both of us so i have one of my staff i haven't met yet but i just i love stuff like that my husband's in the army and um that stuff makes me happy when people market that way so <laughs> <laughs> so i benefited and it's the, it's the softest <laughs> pair of You're socks kind of a military dependent i guess basically <laughs> But um, it's the softest pair of socks that I've ever knit. That's it's so such exciting. soft yarn, and it's just so comfy on my feet, and I loved it. And um, it's called Marion Bright. I don't know if I said that. It was a sock set. It was the tiniest mini that I've ever seen. She actually had split it into two. Oh. Um, but I got heels, toes, and cuffs with it. I thought I was only going to get two of the three. Um, but I got all three, and I had just the tiniest little bit left. Like, just, like, less than a gram. Interesting. Left. It was really cool. So I was excited that I got that done, and they're comfy. Love them. Um, also, I meant to say, when I was wearing this, or when I was knitting this the other day, my niece Madison came over, May May, and she, like, looked at it, and she said, is it for me? And Stop I said, it. No, no. It's for me. It's very big. She's like, can I put it on? So I put it on her, and she's like sitting there like looking at me with her big eyes and she you said make her one with your leftovers she said on saturdays will you knit me one <laughs> i said every saturday she was like yeah and i was like yes i will she's three so oh. it won't take me long i took her measurements she's so tiny it's not gonna be bad no I can do it, right yeah you can it's do fine. it fine did you measure like her wrist her you wrist really start and then her wrist to here and then i measured um to here like this and then i measured up and down i measured down from her back i measured arm to arm Genius. arm to the middle of her back i was like arm to middle is a great measurement yeah ticket. yeah for that center <laughs> so scene. i was like okay we're gonna try it and then i'm gonna divide it by 24 total yeah. so it's 12 on each side so i'm not gonna do the 25th i'm using oh. my 25th skein for socks anyway 
That's not FO. So that was just a side, side story, tangent. Sorry, we're that not That was for so those. exciting, though. That yeah. was so cute. To, she uh, was the cutest. We'll have to do a little photo shoot of you and Maymay with your matching sweaters when they're done. And I think I'm going to rearrange the colors so that it's just in chromat, like, rainbow order. Yeah, that's um, a good idea. Yeah, because I want hers to be a little bit... I should have done that with mine, but I had started early. You yeah. know, I was opening my advents. I didn't know. Um, it's fun this way, but yeah, you I, know, I think you'll enjoy that. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> that was my Rise of Tech Fiber Co. socks and a side story. Then I have my mom's <laughs> gloves. Boom. These are the Prince Edward mitts. Prince Prince Edward Island mitts. I don't know. Some name there. And I think those were started and finished since the last podcast. Yes. Yeah. I made them with the DK from um, the Yarn Hag Ryan. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about her a lot in this episode. Yes, we so. are. So, hi, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> She sent um, me some bubble pink um, yarn from Arkansas Yarn Co. It's the DK, which I'm not used to using DK, but it was lovely. And Lori's DK is thick. I get wasted so with her DK. So it's a DK pattern. It was free pattern. And mm -hmm. it's just like a little mitt that's a convertible mitt. So it, it just awesome. ribs long. Picture. You fold it in half. My mom's already worn them, so I couldn't bring them. <laughs> she has, she's worn them like three days in a row. It's been cold, so she's like, yep, I'm wearing my gloves. Cute. So they're super duper cute, and I'm knitting something with the other, the rest of the yarn. And then I knit a pot holder. Do you remember that pattern? It was called the like ball band pot holder. The ball band pot holder, dishcloth. Ball band yeah, dishcloth. Dish I, mine's in my basket down there. I forgot to grab awesome. it. Uh, I'll wanna, grab it in a second. Show, but yeah. I have a picture of mine. Okay, cool. So I'll put a picture here. And I made two scrubbies with the Nitty Natty dish scrubby pattern, uh, which was crochet. Yeah. So I did it. You did crochet. crochet. Look at me go. Um, and those I'm sending are sent to um, someone who sent me money. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if this is like all korean people but um sending money is like, in every situation it's pretty much every situation and uh, my grandma and her korean friends and korean family that i don't get to see that much they'll just like send money for different occasions like new year lunar new year um this one was for a thank you card i sent her a thank you card for sending me money and then and then she sent me money because she loved the card so much. And so vicious cycle I was like, now I'm going to send her a gift for sending me money because it was so sweet to think of me. And so I made her a ball band dish cloth, which I, I'm using as a pot holder and some scrubbies. And I wrote her another thank you note. And I'm like, don't send me money. She's going to send you more money. It's an endless cycle. I promise you. So I don't know if sweet. that's like standard for it's not other for Koreans. I know that it, it's happened a lot. Um, with Korean family, yeah, not awesome. my other family. So, um, I love that. What else did I finish? Is that it? That might be it. Any other socks? No. No. I, cause I showed my other socks on the last one. I haven't picked up any until Sunday. I started another pair of socks. Yeah. We're generally sock knitters. Like, yeah. That's, There's usually not much else on this podcast. No. <laughs> other than a parade of socks with like one lingering sweater or shawl each. Yeah. No. Oh, so many shawls. Yeah. I only have one shawl. But... Shawl la la. <laughs> okay, but that's all my FOs, I'm pretty sure. So do you want to start? With yeah, I've got some FOs. I have them all here. Yay! Um I've done three pairs of socks. You don't have them all here. You have a muscleberg missing. No, it's here. <gasps> I didn't gift it yet. Oh. I held off. Yeah. Um so I will start with that. I knit my little okay, so my youngest brother, Nate, came in my house a couple months ago on his way to a football game and um it was colder than he expected so i grabbed a muscle break that i had knit the dk one out of the baby yoda yarn that i ordered i knit it for my husband but he'd never worn that one because it came out pretty big um and he he my, i've knit four muscle breaks for my husband and like two or three other hats so he has plenty so i gifted this hat to nate he wore it that day and then one of his friends at the game saw it and asked him where he got it and wanted to buy one wanted his mom to buy him one or whatever so i made one couldn't help it it's so cute. That's a good colorway. It is. So I got this yarn in Rogers at Mockingbird Moon. I don't know the name. I know it was in her clearance bin. Um, I knit the adult large. This is BFL, isn't it? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it was I, I had BFL. Taped it, I think when I got it and I lost the tag. So it does feel different, but I love the way it knit up. Um, I knit. I had like 10 grams left. I think I threw it away. Honestly, I was like, eh, I'm done with it. I'm not going to use this 10 grams for anything else. But this is from a little brother's friend. 
I think I started telling that story about my little brother because I was saying that he was out of school all last week. They closed school and went virtual for COVID for a little while. Um, so he couldn't have given this to his friend anyway. Mm. So I said, you can wait till Wednesday because today's Tuesday. Yay. So yeah, that's my first FO. I did most of that. Um, I went to like two movies week before last with my family and I cast it on right before, knit most of it, and then finished it the second movie. So I think Muscle Bugs are my new movie knitting. It's good knitting. I've gotten to the point where I, if I cast on just the cuff of a vanilla sock and knit on it the whole movie, it'll have to I be knit, afterthought. Well, yeah, well, it has to be afterthought everything, even. I've got, I get past the toe now. What? So <laughs> I can knit the entire leg and foot. So, I, which I can do, and I have just like split the yarn and knit until I run out of yarn and then picked up the other sock and knit. But I think Musselberg's my new one because I can get three quarters of a Musselberg done in the movie, which is nice. Um, next will be my sock parade. <coughs> Excuse me. I love those. These are so good. Okay. So the first one, these are dirty, so they're not on blockers. <laughs> these are made for my husband for his birthday. Um, this is mustache yarns in a Star Wars colorway. This might have made it into our last one. I think you had just finished the toe on our last podcast. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that might not be an FO in this one. <laughs> in well, I mean, you hadn't weaved in ends or done anything else. Yeah. So it's an FO. It counts. Then I have two more. Um, excuse me, I'm about to pop again. Don't die. Just, just tell you guys, she's tested negative multiple times. So many times. Um, these are my desert, desert Vista Dye Work socks for January. I knit these, I cast them on on New Year's Day, January 1st, and I finished them on like the 4th. So I think I actually knit all of them except one toe on the 1st because I was in Memphis at, mm -hmm. um, and saw Hamilton. And so these are my Hamilton socks. I love them so much. That's such a cool They're color. So good. I've never knit uh, DVD socks and nice. I probably never will, but these are beautiful. It's just so hard to get her yarn. It I mean, can be, yeah. it can be a list. People send it to you. Well, but... she, well you're going to end up with some Desert Research Dye Work socks this year. So. Yeah, I'm going to end up with socks. But, yeah. you know, this is such a beautiful sock, like, striping pattern. Yeah. The yarn feels amazing. I love that you made the match perfectly. I love your little short, yeah. stubby length. So I length. knit them <laughs> to fit uh, my Doc Martin, my boots that I wear a lot. So they'll fit, like, just the cuff will stick out over the top of, the top of my boot, which I love. I think that's, like, the perfect look so i can wear them other stuff but this is kind of the length i'm enjoying lately and um i think i used 60 grams total with everything so um just 50 of the main color which means i can send the other 50 to someone else or you could have it if you like this color so nice i'll see uh, i'll see how much i have of that one and the last pair the little girl that sits next to me in church every sunday caroline requested a pair of socks so cute. these have been done for three weeks and her family all got covid so they have not been to church and well i missed one because i was quarantined and they have missed two sundays so they go in my purse every time i go to church just in case she's there they're felici with the magic heel pattern um and these i got these sock blockers for christmas they're smalls so i finally have sock blockers for kids socks so yeah those are my last sock fo's so cute. And those are exactly the colors she asked for, except for the orange, right? Yeah, and I showed her and she said, I like orange. I was like, good. <laughs> it's cute. I showed her while they, I was still working on them. Um, but yeah, I like those. And then my last finished object is crochet, <gasps> which leads oh, right into wigs. <laughs> but I knit this tiny little granny square blanket um, for <laughs> the cat couch, which has gotten serious progress while I was quarantined. I wanted to finish it. Um, and I got darn close. I finished the granny square blanket for it and, um, I'm one day away from done on the cat couch. I just kind of lost steam on that and wanted to do everything else. It's not a to go project too. And you've been, I've been going. on the going, yeah. on the going, on the go. I've been walking so much. It's yeah. not a walking project. No, I have not knit at all while I walked. I will start that soon, but this is Michael's loops and threads impeccable yarn in random colors, grays and blues. I thought you were using the uh, the pretty sweater yarn from Buddy, and that's why no, I was like, what the heck are you doing? No, this no. is not very soft. No, it's, it's for a cat. cat. It's for a cat. <laughs> yeah, it's for a cat. <laughs> so that's that. And um, I kind of caught the granny spur bug after this, so mm -hmm. I um, cast on some scrappy granny spurs with some Arkansas yarn for leftovers. I'll show you all that in a minute. And that's one of my whips. So, Yay! Yeah, this is in your foe. And the couch is a whip. I'll show it in a minute too. 
That's all my FFs. That's all our FFs. It feels like a lot because we haven't... It's been so long. Yeah, podcasted in, in, in here. a year. <laughs> it's been a whole year. <laughs> so we're dumb. Um, okay, so transition into whips. Sure, I'll just jump into cat couch Works then. in progress. Since I just talked about her. Talk um, about that couch. Well, first off, Vanna White it. Here's the couch. She's beautiful. She my cat great. scratched it up, so good thing the cover's going on it. Because Are you going to do cushions? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've been, like, considering, I think I'll do, like, one pillow Yeah. with the matching granny squares of the blanket. Love like it. a little granny square mm -hmm. pillow um, to sit on the couch. But this is um, furniture film I got from a local furniture store that I hot glued, I cut and hot glued together for the base. And then I based my pattern that I'm making up. I'm not writing it because I lost all of my notes where I picked this up this week. I couldn't find a single note on it anywhere on any of my, my work computer, my home computer. Um, so I just like made it up again, but I'm not writing this up. It's just happening. If you want to make a cat couch, you can do the math too. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably other cat couches. They're just They're not going to have that. Thing. They're not knit. Yeah. So that's why I was doing it myself is because every, all the patterns I found were crocheted. Um, so this is the slip. Essentially what I'm doing, I've knit yeah, one gigantic that. piece that'll go like this. Ooh. Um, and where it dips in is like the center around the arms. So that's where it gets narrower. It'll like go down here and that way. And then I'm like knitting on armrest covers. And then I think from putting it on that I'll have enough ease that I want knit side pieces, I'll just seam the sides together because they hang over a little bit. My gauge is crazy. Off. So I like cast on this, will be like the base of the arm, and then I'm knitting back in a circle around to connect to the top, and it'll join to the bottom, to the base, and to the back. And then I think I'll be able to just seam the sides, knit the pillow, and call it a day. Got an itchy boob. I think I've used five skeins so far for the base. Um, but I'll weigh this before I put it on. When I finish the other arm, before I put it on the base, I'll weigh to see how much this took so I can at least give like some basic info in my Ravelry notes on like yarn usage and needles for, um, and like measurements, cause I can just measure that. But this is Cat Couch. I really want it done super soon. I want to gift it to my brother. Um, this is not for my cats, it's for my brother's cat cause he asked for this. And the type of person to ask for a handmade cat couch and pay for all the materials receives a handmade cat couch. Yeah, deserves a handmade cat couch. So I'm gonna have yarn left over. Um, and I think I will immediately donate it and get it out of my life. <laughs> because I've been working on this for a year, not actively, but I've had a, a homemade couch base in the top of my closet for a year. So I'm done. I'm so, I, it's moved. I've moved it from one house to another. It's yeah. Been, Forever. So I feel me. like your cats deserve a little granny square blanket, especially yeah. since Baxter really liked it. Mm -hmm. My cats would never sleep with a blanket over them. They're I can send so you that annoying. picture. I took a picture of Baxter it so cute. up under it. Boom, there it is. Maybe. <laughs> if she sent it to me. She it's remembers. Project pages. <laughs> I'll send it to you. So that's my biggest one. I worked on that a ton while I was quarantined. Um, do you want me to keep going or do you want to bounce back and forth? It doesn't matter to me. I'll just keep talking. Really oh, wait, I have one more FO. <gasps> Go for it. I forgot. I'm so silly. Me and my mom made stitch markers. Oh, yeah. I'm so silly. I brought them so I could show you guys how derpy some of them are. Um, I want to see them so bad. They're so stupid looking. Uh, this is the most stupid looking. I haven't actually attached the clasps yet. This is Pedro. The purple cat. Look at him. He, why does he look like I have a mustache? Um, that's supposed to be his mouth. I mean, you know, we tried our best. That's mine. I made this one. You see him? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he, I love he's it. got a vibe. So, like, I started making clay stitch markers because of Alexandra from um, Fiberbound. Fiberbound. Yeah. She had posted, it, like, the link on one of her videos to Creative Rachie on YouTube, who gives very good tutorials, but she makes it look so easy. And mine looks stupid. This is the first one I made. Um, and I have the clasp on it and everything. So it's so cute. Super cute. And I still have all the clay from when I first did that. So I was like, hey mom, we're stuck here in quarantine because my sisters both had COVID and they were at my house. So me and my mom, who were both negative, are fine. Um, but we weren't allowed to go anywhere because just in case. 
So <laughs> we were stuck together and we decided to have craft night. It was super fun. So I showed my mom this video of creative Rachie and she was like, oh my gosh, she's, she's adorable. This is awesome. I could do that easily. And I was like, okay, mom, you're like a little overconfident. Like, <laughs> like it's harder than it looks. Like look at my stupid cat. Um, I made this apple. She's good. Do you see it? That's so cute. That's a good one. I also made these bananas. It's like a little set of bananas. Those are so good. Yeah, okay, I got better at fruit. I'm, I'm, I've decided I'm not good at animals, so I don't get to do animals anymore. I made this little orange. Oh my gosh, I know, right? stop I it. made fruit, I made a mushroom too, but the mushroom looks kind of stupid. Um, there's my mushroom. No, it's adorable. And they're like, they're pretty oh, good, right? Okay. So and then cute. I made, I think the last one I made, I made a couple hearts that are not great. I made a carrot. The carrot's cute too. So here's our uh, little that carrot. That is so cute. It's got like lines and everything. You see her? I love it. Yeah, she's That's cute. adorable. It's a little chubby carrot. But my mom turned out to be really good at <laughs> I forget all the time my mom's super duper creative. Um, so she made this like little octopus guy and he's adorable. Oh my god, go Patty. Like, oh, she's so cute. right? Okay, and then she, this was her first one that she made. It was the duck. That's the cutest thing in the entire world. It's just. It's like a legit, like cute little duck too. Like that is so I'm cute. Obsessed. It's got wings. It's got a little back, a little beak. Her. I love oh my it. Gosh, is that a pig? It's a pig. Stop. And it's really cute. Like, <laughs> it also could be like a mouse, kind of. Kind of. I feel like I messed up the tail when I baked it, mm. but like a little piggy. And then she made this whale. Did I break it already? Oh. No. It's like a little whale guy. Its eyes are far apart. That's why I say it's all derpy. Mm. Um, and then I think that's it. Oh, a snail. Where'd the snail go? There he is. The snail, she used up all her extra clay. Oh, I did break off his antenna. He had little black antenna. <coughs> but all her clay, her clay scraps she used to make a snail. So it's like an adorable mom. So yeah, that was an FO. Sorry, took a long time. It's just so fun. <laughs> I love it's it. It's so fun to make and I totally recommend the tutorials. Alexander's came out really good. Yeah. Really good. She made four. I think she made like a bunny and a donut and they were all super duper cute. Um, but like, I'm just not patient enough. And that's like really like, you have to be dexterous. I'm not dexterous. Okay. Back to whips. Sorry. Tangent. Back to the whips. Back to whips. Let I'm me trying to slide this whip on a sock locker so you can see the color. My socky. Socky boy. It's not bad. I started these with my scraps from this sweater. Well, with my, not scraps, my full skein from the sweater I'm wearing. This is Wooly Mama Yarn Co. And this is Arkansas Yarn Co. again. This little mint green color from the Peeps collection. And this one's called Jingle Bell Rock from Wooly Mama. I started this at Starbucks the other day and I like it. So this is a thin yarn, Wooly Mama's just thin. So I picked up four extra stitches after I finished my ribbing so that I could have like a little bit more room and it wouldn't be so tight because her yarn is very small. It's like just very light. But I really like the colors, I think it's very pretty. And mm -hmm. I didn't really have enough green to do all the stuff. So I'm doing purple cuff on the other one. And then I'm gonna do like, mm. one of them's gonna have a yellow heel, one of them's gonna have a pink heel, one of them's oh, gonna have crazy. a blue toe. I just have all these minis, so. I love. Yeah, I think it'll be cute and fun. And that's in this bag. So all these socks, this is from <sighs> Mountain State Stitches from Maddie. It was part of my Christmas present, it's mm -hmm. really good. Okay. I'm Here's also her. using that bag right uh, here. I got us matching ones and our friend Jana. Um, no, uh, Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah. I'm doing a different friend, my bad. Yes. Um, I'm test knitting the sweetheart socks that Nitty Natty is designing. Oh, so cool. She's collaborating with Moon Glow yarn, so there is a sock set to go with it. And then it's a pattern of like the main color and all the color work is in different minis. But I'm doing the two color version. These are my first color work socks that I've not failed at. They fit. My gauge is great. I'm so incredibly happy with them. I just love them. So, um, her pattern was really, really, really good. And I'm just in the test knitting phase. So it's not even finalized. It's not out yet, but it will be beginning of February, I think. I think February, February 1st. 1st. I think she's been um, posting about that. So, I finished this sock a couple weeks ago, but um, then when I weighed my yarn, I realized I would not have enough of my gray 
to do the second sock the same color because the pattern's written to have three of the stripes like this and then solid main color, solid gray, and then three stripes before the toe. Um, so I pulled back and I'm striping the entire foot instead, just in two color stripes to hopefully have enough of my gray to make the second sock match. Um, if I don't have enough, I will probably just not finish these. Just What can just... you do, a blue toe? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that too. So mm -hmm. I'll stripe and then do the toe blue. But anyway, I really love these. Um, really, really happy with them. I don't think I was gonna say anything else. Oh, I'm using Stress Knits Perfectly Adequate, the leftovers from the sweater. And um, Mitchell's Creations. Ooh. And Boyfriend Jeans. Love it. That's a star container toe. Oh, so that's Mitchell's baby. Creations. She's so nice. Tara. Yeah, Tara. So um, that's what I was knitting on right now too, but that's my other sock whip. And then the only other sock I'm working on, I believe, <clears throat> is this. This is, oh, you kept the label. Good. Yeah, look at me being a good podcaster. Um, Jadifra in Lana Mia sock. This I got at a yarn store in Germantown, right outside of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, back in the summer, I went on a day trip with my mom and my friend Jana, and I gave Kristen one of these colors too, so she she could have similar socks. Mine's more pink. Yes. <laughs> these are similar to the Regia Perfect in the sense that like it's one skein. And you um, cut out like a hot pink at the start and then cast on, knit the cuff until the color changes, knit the leg until the color changes, the heel, and then blah, blah, blah. So yeah. we're up closer because this pattern is so, so interesting. Cool. I'm excited. Now I want to pull mine out and knit that too. And it it's already caked. That's why I grabbed it because I just wanted to cast something on. I wanted no effort. And it was already caked. I just grabbed it and cast on. So yeah, I'm excited. Very cute. Those are the only socks I have on the needles right now. I only had that one pair. That's <clears> it. <throat> and I just cast it on. See, I had no pairs. I need to. I was just looking through my planner earlier today to figure out if I had any, like, project deadlines coming up. And I do have a couple pattern designs I'm working on and things like that. Um, that'll come up soon. But I realized one of my resolutions last year and this year was to knit birthday socks for everyone in my family. And one of my uncle's birthdays is mid-February. And I almost forgot about that, the uncle that lives here. So I'm going to cast on some socks for him. And then I don't have any family birthdays till May. So I have some time to um, pick out yarn. I might do Desert Vista for my sister-in-law. Yeah, I figured Desert Vista is going to be like all your socks. And you also have tubes still. Mm -hmm. You can cut apart tubes. I have a muzzle bird on the needles in my um, Stitching Plaza bag. This is from Georgian. I'm still in Christmas bags. Don't judge me. I told the project to <laughs> I yeah. love this bag though. So anyway, and it's my Christmas yarn. This is leftover from the Cozy Knitter. Oh, yeah. So it's my 2021 striping muscle work. I did this with my leftovers from the 2021 too and I want to see how they compare. I've already seen someone else knit it up. Carrie Ann did mm -hmm. and so we're gonna have matching hats. They're gonna be so cute and I won't have enough to finish the whole hat in stripes because it's only 50 grams of leftovers. 60 Ish. I think right? Yeah they're pretty yeah. hefty. So um yeah so I will finish the rest. I think I'm gonna do gray but I don't know. I might pick like red or something mm. to do as my other color. But mm. I've gotten a few stripes done. I think this is where I was the last time I showed it on podcast. So just a, just a little bit. But uh, yeah, like so I have like one ball in there that I'm working on because I am on the just plain knitting now. Yeah, I'm past my increases, and this is the rest of the ball. So once I finish what's on already connected then I can finish this too which is a full 24 stripes so I'll have 48 stripes of hat love it just like last time just awesome. like last time that's that's nice it is nice I like it mm -hmm. so that's my muscle berg um I have a scrappy blanket that I just started this is the green spray I was talking about earlier that I just was randomly inclined to cast on look at this bag though another mountain state stitches bag and I this love. is such a pretty color mm -hmm. i've never bought a big one and i want one now i love them i have three and they're great mm. um i'll get you one in the next update if you don't get it but <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> if you don't yeah, yeah i'll pay you for it <laughs> <laughs> um or we'll call it a birthday present or whatever <laughs> anyway this is a granny square i didn't use a pattern i just cast on granny square this is using uh, this whole blanket i'm going to use arkansas yarn co Leftovers. Um, so squishy. Whether it's from Advents or projects, I have just kind of a beginning of them in here. I know I have more scraps of this, of our container and co than this, but here's a few. Most of this is sparkle, but I do have a few in here that are not. Um, if that's high twist. Is that? That's not our container and co. 
Doesn't look like it. Maybe it is though. That's some weird coloring here. That doesn't look like Lori. She wouldn't do that. That's brown. Why is this in this bag? Accidents happen. This, <laughs> I think this was a mini swap with Lindsay. Ah, I think. Sorry. Um, you're fine. Um, I feel like you yeah, need one of those this, blockers now. I use this for the heels and toes on the socks I made for you for Christmas. Ah. So this doesn't go in here. Sorry. Um, yes, like Lindsay, Lindsay has, has. I want one mm -hmm. too. Lindsay, have your husband make us those too. Because yeah. I think he made them for her, right? Yeah, except I'd have to, I'll send you the measurements in my granny squares and you can have your husband. But she has like a pegboard and she oh. can like change it, I think. That's like, fun. Yeah, right? Lindsay. I think so. Um, I think I've, I think that's Lindsay. Lindsay is always, yeah, she does have one. Yeah. Because she's doing a scrappy granny, granny square with her row one mm -hmm. minis. Lindsay is always yarn first on Ravelry Instagram and YouTube. She just started a podcast recently. I think she just put out her third or fourth mm -hmm. episode. So check her out. But this is the square I'm working on right now. Extra boob. <laughs> Did you even notice? Um, my intention with this is to leave it in my car. And on Sundays when I go to church, throw a couple minis in my bag and knit on granny squares during church. That way it gets some work every week. I always have church knitting um, and it'll be like a scrappy Sunday. But I would love a hand knit blanket or a hand crocheted, a handmade blanket. Um, and I just haven't found one yet that I can tolerate. So I'm curious if this will last, but right now I'm enjoying it. Hey. I have so many granny squares that I've just never touched. Mm -hmm. Just like a drawer full of granny squares. And I'm like, really? Just throw them away then. You're not doing anything. Throw them away. Yeah. It's all acrylic and like, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have... I'm using a G hook for those with finger and weight. So. Are you holding it double? Nope. Just regular? Regular. Regular schmegular? I think I'm done with regular knitting. Oh, I have more. Um, whips. I have, um, I have shawls, so. I have three yeah, shawl all along. So I will... Um, the other day I cast on, I wanted a headband to wear while I was walking because oh, my ears were cold, um, but I didn't want to put a hat on. So I just cast on as many stitches as I could fit on this 16 inch needle and fingering weight and I'm going to knit around and around and then I'm going to do that thing where you like twist it to seam it. So it'll be like a little double over headband with a twist. That's a big thick boy. It will be big. I don't know. I might have cast on too many, but I also don't care. No, it's going to be cute. So like it'll be, yeah, that'll be super cute. That's not how a headband goes. How do I wear headbands? You're gonna wear it like like this, but all around your head, right? It's gonna be thick, is yeah. the thing. It's like, it's gonna go up. You're talking over anyway. your eyes. <laughs> I don't, my brain's not working. But yeah, <laughs> I've passed it on. I don't know if it'll happen. This is with stress knits. This is the main color, or the Very pretty. final stain from the advent, I think. Yeah, it is. So I don't know. I might frog this a little big. Maybe put it on a 12 inch needle. Yeah, I wanted to do it on a two. No, this is on a one. This is on a one. Oh, um, sock style. Yeah, I just was feeling that. Nice. I like my. I, I knit so loosely. I didn't mm -hmm. think I wanted, like, for warmth. I'm like dropping all the stitches. I'm, like, it's okay. Just, it. just knit it. Anyway, um, I just cast that on because I wanted something vanilla the other day, and then I've like barely touched it. It's also in the Mountain State Stitches bag. Two more things. I have a colorwork hat that I started a while back. I have a hat too, I forgot. <laughs> that I've knit on a little bit. This is the woven hat um, by... I'll put Kate the link. Miller, I think? Mm, something um, Miller, I think. I tagged her on my Instagram story the other day. But anyway, this is this. And the teal is a Malabrigo Singles and the black I don't remember. But it's from my stash, the charcoal gray or whatever. It's just like a buffalo plaid colorworky hat and I like it a lot. I'm kind of into color work right now because I felt so motivated after those socks. Like Natalie had such great tips and then like the testing group gave me great pointers. So I just feel, feel really, really good about that. So that's that hat. Are you knitting that one inside out? I'm not on this one. Um, I did knit the socks inside out on this one. I was knitting it inside out, but it kept like flipping back outside anyway. And I think my gauge is fine on it. Um, so I stopped being like flipping it back and back because it just kind of naturally didn't want to go that way. So I think it's okay. I never knit color work inside out, but everyone always says that. And I'm always curious. It works the really, really is. well on the socks because I've always had issues with color work socks being too tight. So inside out on that was really cool. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, I'm not. And then one more hat. I started <clears throat> a Christine hat by Corey of I Rock Knits. I bought the kit from Arkansas Yarn Co. Ah. Um, I don't know where I got this bag. It's off Etsy. I don't know who it's by. But this is a beaded hat. I've never done beading in my knitting before. Um, 
Butterfly Sisters. I don't have more acquisitions on there. Oh yeah, Butterfly <laughs> Sisters on Etsy. Where did the little beading tool go? I wanted to show you. Yeah, that thing's cool. Lori's selling beetle needles. So it's a little, it's got a tiny, tiny crochet hook on this side. And then oh. this side is a little angle, what? Beetle needles yeah. for beads. I was like, why is it called a beetle? That's gross. Oh my gosh, <laughs> like for beads. <laughs> but it's a crochet hook, but you can like thread your beads on it. And then it has these little stoppers, the little black things on either end to hold the beads on. So when I use it, I take this top stopper off and then I just like set it down beside me or stand it up in my bag or whatever. And then when I'm ready to put on a bead, it's like already on the edge of my hook because you just push up the bottom stopper to keep them at the top and you just like place your hook and move on. Place your bead and move on. Really cute. Lori knit like three of these hats and I just could not stop thinking about how cute my sister-in-law and my niece would look in these hats. So I got the charcoal gray, I'm doing pink beads. They're cute. They're so cute. So cute. I got three skeins of the yarn. Um, Lori said she just broke into the second skein for a hat. Lindsay said she didn't touch the second skein for a hat, but I'm doing an adult medium for my sister-in-law and then I'll do an adult small for, or maybe another adult medium for my niece because she's got so much hair. Yeah, and she's then, got like a normal size yeah. head. She's I might just do the nine, same. right? Yeah. That's like a human head. <laughs> As opposed to <laughs> a dog head? I don't um, know. Oops, sorry, oh gosh. And if I have <laughs> enough yarn left over, if I have like half a skein, I'll do a little baby hat. I have my to show face. this yarn. It is so soft. It is this like weird, like locking yarn. It's so interesting. And it has mohair. I love it. It's like that it's woven fun. yarn. Yeah. It's like woven together, not just plied. It's really, really fun. The pattern's really easy so, so far. Soft. It's my first beaded project. Who did you say the yarn is by? Ilamani? Ah. Oh, that sounds right. It's in my Ravelry, so I can text it to you because mm -hmm. I did write it down before I tossed the tags. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about that. I've been knitting on it a little bit. I haven't, I mean, I just haven't knit much over the last couple of days, but I believe that is all of my whips that are not shawls. I have one more Mountain State Stitches bag and one more hat. hat. This is my beret for oh, the yeah. Books and Berets Mal. The Books and Berets Mal is by uh, Professor Pearl, Prof Pearl here on YouTube. And um, Which I think it's what? Professor Pearl on YouTube and Prof Pearl on Instagram. Oh, is it? The yeah. opposite? Okay. Um, I'm a mess. Anyway, I just started it and I was a little bit nervous that it was gonna be too big for my mom. Um, but I think that now that I'm looking at it, it's actually the right size that it needs to be. Why am, <laughs> why? Uh, Cause it goes like this. I think this tag is, I know that's not the yarn That's you're using, Mama, but yeah. That's a beautiful tag. Oh my gosh, this is cute, this is a cute look. So like, it's, Wait, it's you put not, on a beret. I no. sound like Nicole right now. No, I cannot. Nicole's gonna comment. She's no. gonna say, you Nicole, rock don't that you beret. Dare. This is my she mom's, not. first of all. She's probably gonna knit you it one. It matches her gloves. Yeah. Oh. Um. It's Bubblicious by Arkansas Yarn Co. in the DK from Ryan the Yarn Hag. And it is the Slice of Pie Beret. And I was actually motivated to do the Mal. First of all, I had the yarn and I was like, my mom would absolutely rock a beret. She would. Jana would too. I feel like they just I can, can do it. I can knit one for Jana. You can I've been, one like, for Jana. I'm gonna knit one for her. Yeah. Cause I was gonna knit one for my mom and then she said she was gonna knit her own. And I'm like, <laughs> Mom, knit one for Jana. Jana will absolutely rock a beret. I'm She'll be so for pink. pink. Do you have any pink in your stash? Guaranteed. I bought it for to. you at some point. Um, so I don't remember who it's by, but below, um, I bought a book. I brought a book because that's what motivated me to do it. Is I haven't read. I've talked about wanting to read more, so I brought my book. This is "It's Always the Husband" by mm -hmm. Michelle Campbell. I have a bookmark in it that I made with. Candy wrappers because Love. goals. You are, you know, you have. That's what I had. Okay, <laughs> I was like, I don't want to bend the pages. My sister actually lent me this book. Um, I like to not read anything about it, and then that read the fun. book. Yeah, like I don't want to know anything about it. She's just like my sister has the same taste as me, so she she gave me the book and was like, I think you'll like it. So you just said no. immediately. So I don't look at the back cover. I don't read the front. I don't read anything about it. I just start reading it. I don't it. think I do either. I if have to. If I get to. the recommendation or if I get yeah. like, I tend to just go off of what people recommend. So since we did the um, cast on party for the shawl, which we'll talk about in a second, and we were all talking about the books and berries mail a lot mm -hmm. in that, um, and I got a bunch of book <laughs> recommendations. So I wrote all those down. Um, and then I also got um, 
not peer pressured, kind of peer pressured, influenced. I was tempted to buy the new Kindle paperwhite, <laughs> so I did. Uh, she <laughs> Snapchatted me in the middle of the night and said, I couldn't find my charger for my Kindle, so I bought a new one. Oh no, my charger was too far away from me. No, I couldn't find <laughs> it. I, I'm sure I couldn't find it. Um, not just too far away. Which is, it's just a USB charger. But yeah. <laughs> there was one on the other side of the bed for my husband's yes, but, I love it. Um, yeah, so I just bought the new one. I'm excited. It got here the day before yesterday or yesterday. It got here at some point and I immediately turned it on, charged it, and I started reading again. So that's really, it's really beautiful and I like it more than I liked my other one just because it's newer. I probably hadn't read a book in two years. Yeah. I read a lot for work and it's hard for me to want to sit down that's and read, insane. especially since I like physical books too. Um, I just love a like paper copy book. Yeah. I love to turn the pages. I love the smell of books. I love books. Um, and I have a lot of books, but they're all in storage because everything I own is in storage. Anyway, <laughs> um, I have read like six chapters of it. Hooked. Love it. Yay. Um, I added it. Um, I put a hold on it at the library, so I'll get it eventually. It's good. Um, I mean, it's kind of cheesy. I feel I like, like I don't know who this author is. I've no, never read anything by her. I'm I don't know anything Campbell. about her. But sometimes when you read a book, you know, like, the author is not the age group of the people she's writing about. Oh, yeah. And so, and it's it feels like it's supposed to be kind of modern, but it's very clear that this is an, like, older person or I not the that. right age group to yeah. be talking about like 18 year olds and so Funny. and it jumps in time and i love that and i love mysteries and i love like twists so if you know any books that have like a plot twist don't tell me what it's about but if it's a plot twist um i love reading plot twists i think the book i'm listening to right now so i usually will have like one going that i'm reading and one that i'm listening to for like walking around the car or whatever i'm listening to a book called malibu pier i believe right now um, and I didn't read the synopsis or anything, but I know that it's got like some sort of mystery, like plot twist in it because that's the section it showed up in, in my Kindle recommendations. I think there's like some sort of like house fire involved that they Love try it. and investigate. But so far I'm like halfway through and it does that where it like jumps in time and it's mm -hmm. like, generationally this family and you're like kind of hearing all of like I used to their love stories like, that. like how they all <laughs> met their spouses and how their families are all kind of intertwined and all that but i know there's some sort of plot twist coming so if it's good i'll tell you because it's I from it. california that's where you're from so yeah that's where it's there's based. lots of fires there so yeah. that's rough but it's interesting i don't know anything about it even though i'm reading it <laughs> yeah but i'm really excited yeah. that i picked up a book i have a couple others that my sister has given me that didn't look as interesting as this one um i really like things where it's like kind of murdery yeah a little bit my murdery. other book is murdery too the other yeah. one i'm reading is called her perfect family or a perfect family something like that i can't remember who it's by my kindle the other <laughs> one but um in like the first chapter someone dies so or get shot i don't think she does. i love that like it's so, like a the first page yeah. and they're running through the woods and it, yeah but then it's all another sudden, one where it's like later. two or three main characters so yeah. the chapters kind of jump from perspectives i love that so it's i'm really mm -hmm. enjoying that one so far that. and one of the perspectives is like the mom and dad and then there's the daughter mm -hmm. and like it's really good Oh, so doesn't bother me a little. I don't really like it when they switch gender. I don't think any author has done it right for me. Hmm. Like where they can write well as a male and a female voice. Interesting. Yeah. This one's good. It's majority male voice, but not in a way that annoys me. A lot of times it annoys me. Um, and the female voice, she's in a coma. So you're like, it, it's her thoughts. <laughs> it's true. I don't know. I like it so far. I'm really I'm not picky about books. It's, love it. It takes a lot for me to be like, oh, I hated it. Like, it, it's a book. I'm reading it. It's good. This is such a tangent. Do you have, like, a favorite author? Oh, my God. We've been recording for an hour. An hour, yeah. <laughs> we haven't even talked about it in a long no. time. Or the prize. We're about to. It's fine. Go. <laughs> um, my brother's asking me if we're going to go on a walk later. Anyway. Do I have a favorite mm -hmm. author? Not really. Um, I've had different favorite authors, like, throughout... I don't know. It depends. I go through phases. There, I think her name's Kate White. She does like murder mystery type books. I was really into her stuff last year. Mm -hmm. I read like probably a dozen of her books, and they're just like kind of cheesy murder yeah. mystery type. And really, I think it's Kate White. And um, all of them that I read of hers, I really liked. And then um, I had a couple people recommend authors that I, they thought I would like based on some of the stuff I said during our live. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if I actually like those. I added a ton. 
and I re-upped my Kindle Unlimited so I could read more that way. And I'm excited. I used to you read favorite author? all of the V.C. Andrews books, mm -hmm. uh, which are, I don't know what you would call it. I don't know. I call it trauma. Um, they're, but they're uh, pretty, pretty good. It's fiction and they're like kind of like gripping, but they're mm -hmm. not good. They're bad. Um, I don't like rom romance novels. I do. Can't get into smut. I like I just, it's not for me. Um, even like the book that I'm reading kind of like leans into it and I'm like, can we just skip that part? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and then <laughs> just thinking about that TikTok. So TV. gay. <laughs> it's like when you're reading a really steamy romance, <laughs> but it's steamy, trying to picture the position, <laughs> and the girl's like, "Gimme the snack I, I need the gambi soon. He stayed my femba in the bar soon." So good, so good, so stupid. sorry. Okay, no, I love it. I might clip that. I might clip it and put it in. Okay. <laughs> Um, but anyway, V.C. Andrews, I really, really liked Mary Higgins Clark and Carol Higgins Clark. Um, those were good. I had a favorite book for a long time, and now I don't remember what it's called. The mood. I've completely lost I'm it. I'm one of those people that I can't describe the books I'm reading to you. I'll say, oh, I just finished this book. It was really good. And you'll say, what's it about? Like, I don't, I don't know. People, I think. They were people. I have no <laughs> idea. It does not stick. <laughs> But Terrible. I like reading, okay. but I don't know what it's about. Uh, I know like, whether it was murder or romance or crime, but like murder, romance, crime. Some crimes the are involved murder. <laughs> Some crimes are just like theft or yeah. no, attempted I don't like murder. No, murder. Or <laughs> murder or bust. Yeah. Murder or nothing. Okay. Um, shawls. Shawl -a -lol along. That's us. We're doing it. Okay, let's show our shawls first. Okay. Uh, well, I'm doing two. Oh my gosh. Good yeah. for you. Because I started my star flake. So the shawl all along started January 8th or 9th and goes through March 12th. I looked at it today. Yay! You look, looked at look it. Look at me. <laughs> um, and it's just knit a shawl. Knit a shawl with us. Any shawl, any pattern, any weight. Um, whips are okay as long as it's not like almost done. Like less than halfway on our system. Just be chill with it. Um, and we have chatter and fo threads on ravelry and um a hashtag shawl -la -la along so shawl -la 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 -la. Shawl -la 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 along it was a joke we love it <laughs> and now it's a real thing it's a real thing shawl -la 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 along okay which so one are you showing you're showing i'm showing my girl from the grocery store shawl that too i can do that you've done a lot more than me nothing i didn't get those needle tips a little bit the other day, I, don't think. I think i brought them in my bag cool because i want to switch this to my chat news <sighs> Um, I'm using stress knits, big surprise, <laughs> in the color of my squad gourds, and that's my main color, and then my, I'm using the squad gourds mini set, that's that color deconstructed, there's like three more, as my contrast colors, and we've altered the pattern to have an I-cord edge, so that's the only alteration, otherwise I'm doing it to pattern, except it's doing a mini set instead of a second skein. This is mine, I've done almost none. Oh, I love how yours is like the... Like the crazy color and then the solids as the stripes. I think so that's gonna be fun. I mean, oh, mine's yeah, the same way. Is it not? Oh, it's wow. the same way, but this is just a less um, saturated color way, like okay, the, the lighter yeah. color, and yours is more saturated. Um, so mine, I'm on section five, I think, oh, or I just ahead. finished section five. So each little stripe is one section of a repeat. Twelve. 10, there 12 are 10, sections, ten. Ten of the first, and then it moves oh, into lace. Yay. I charted it out. So if you prove to me that you bought the pattern, I will give you my my spreadsheet. Give me your spreadsheet. Well, I'll give you the spreadsheet. Okay. <laughs> I gave it to Shannon because Shannon already, she has a pattern too, yeah. but she was like, yeah, if you have a checklist, give me the checklist. So I made a spreadsheet. It's really cute, but you have to prove to me that you bought the pattern because I ain't giving away the pattern. It is a paper pattern by Joji Locat. Hohi Locatelli. Hohi Locatelli. <laughs> I like it. It's kind of curling. Uh, that's because we did the eye cord. Mm -hmm. It'll block. It'll block. Um, I like oh, yeah, it though. It'll block. I did mine the same way as hers, mm -hmm. one main skein and one set of minis. This is good. Yeah. So it's like, those are the first color two. One, color two. Uh -huh. That's color the third three. color. They're gradiating. Yeah. And then the next one's blue, I think. Yeah. Well, no, it's like a purpley blue and then there's blue. Blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mine's in the Insta Stitches bag, by the way, again, as is everything in my life. Mine's in the Anchors Away bag, uh, which is uh, from the sock. The sock blockers yeah. that we're going to be giving away. Well, oh, yeah. anyway. I think those are the ones I want to give away. I don't know. Anyway, that's one shawl. Um, that was using Nanette Wakes was my mini set. And Ken Yarns was my main color. And now I have 
a starflake shawl. Starflake. Just the beginning. It could be like a little collar. Yeah, I was little, like feeling bitey. Wrap that on Max's neck. Oh my gosh, but look how cute it is. So this is Malabrigo Fuchsia, and this is Dreaming Color Smooshy in the color Dune. Which is okay, you know. I'm writing that book too. <laughs> <laughs> but yay, this is as far as I got, and I actually did it on like New Year's Eve, and mm -hmm. I haven't touched it since because I've been knitting. Sweaters. I feel like we both went kind of cast on crazy for a second and then yes. just stopped. We're like, cast everything on and then do not touch well, it. Well, I wanted this done. This took up all my time for the last two weeks. That was me with the cat couch. But I have it's that in my favorite <clears throat> snap bag. Oh, snap bag from Jimmy Beans. Um, I am trying to reorganize all my bags because yeah. I've run out of bags. I'm like, what? That's why I'm using like. Do you want some bags? I, I have, have so bags. Many. I've just I'm storing yarn in them, and I'm like, don't store yarn in the bag. Store yarn in your storage, your yarn storage. I'll see if I have I any more some. O snap bags and give them to you because I don't like them. I love them. I kind of I thought I liked them. I like the small one I have that has a hook, but or that has like a wrist thing. But I don't like bags that don't have a way for me to hold it. So if I haven't already given them to you, I will give them to you. I have loved seeing everyone's shawl a lot along. Yes, yeah, so good. Oh, I forgot to say, this was for the Radventurely Mal too, by Breaking Yarn and Leah Loves to Knit. I've tagged it on my Instagram a bunch. I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, yeah, so they're basically doing for anyone who's knitting Advents through January through March, I think. Um, oh. So if you have other Advent projects you're trying to finish, you can join theirs. I think it's just on Instagram though. I haven't found a thread. Do you have to finish a project or would my granny squares that are using Advent scraps with that count? I don't know. I think they're just looking at the hashtag. I don't know if, if that's like gifts. You are watching it's just a motivation. For some I think McKaylee watches us sometimes and Leah follows us. Also, so like I can never enter for prizes because that feels greedy. I don't think that they are doing but, prizes. So I think it's just a motivation I thing. I just want to participate. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure it's just a participation thing. I haven't seen anything about prizes. Not that prizes anyway. are greedy. I just realized what I said because they're not. I just feel like because we give away prizes, it would be weird for me to get prizes. It wouldn't. It'd be cool. But like. Yeah. Someone who won uh, from the knitting posse won one of our prizes. That's awesome. Yeah. That's they true. have a podcast. That's not weird. Good. It just no. feels weird to me. It does feel weird to me too because we're drowning in yarn. Yeah, that's, that's a different really podcast. It it's not about. <laughs> yeah, it's not about our podcast. It's just about having too much yarn. So let's talk about prizes people sent us to give to you wonderful people for the shawl all along. Should we do the Jingle Bell sock? Yeah, we can drop first? that real quick. Yeah. We drew a winner for the Jingle Bell sock along because it took Yay. us forever. So what are we giving away, Kristen? We're giving away a pair of shorty sock blockers. I don't have a picture of them, but they're very cute. They're by Knitting Left. She doesn't make these kind anymore, so yay you mm -hmm. um i've had them for a while i have barely used them i do not make shorty socks and they're really high quality blockers so they're actually they're these right well i'm not gonna give these ones away i don't think i was thinking this is the anchors ones i think i want to give away one of the flower ones okay. I have two flower ones it's gonna be this shape and this height and like a wood just a different cutout i think flowers yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I might give away all three because honestly, I don't use them. Well, I could spread them out. Yeah. Do one now. Spread them out. Because I think I'll give away one of my pairs of flower ones too because Lori was doing kits with knitting left for a long time and we're both suckers mm -hmm. for kits. And it was like yarn that went with the theme of the sock walkers. So I have three sets of the shorty sock walkers. I use them very occasionally. One of my sets is a large and I do use those because my husband loves shorties. And one of my sets is these and then I have another set exactly like this and a flower. And I think I'll give that away eventually. Mm -hmm. But we drew a winner, so you'll get those sock walkers and a random skin of yarn from our giveaway pile. Um, I typically will like scroll through your Instagram and look at your color vibe yeah. and try and give you something you like, mm -hmm. but also <laughs> depending on what we have available to us. And you don't have an Instagram that we can find. Yeah, but you have a Ravelry. And by you, we mean the Knitting Texan. Yay! Yay! That's Her the... name is Rin. She Rin. has a podcast. She does. We will we'll link it below. Yes. We'll link it below. Yes. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> We just used a random number generator. I asked my Amazon device over there to pick a number um, based out of... We just did a chatter thread for that one. Well, I'm going to say You shall not be named. Well, because then it'll trigger everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it picked post number 41, which is the Knitting Texan. She said it was her first pair of finished socks. They're a Christmas gift. I don't know if she means first pair of finished socks ever or first pair of make-along. Either one is cool. They are beautiful. And Rin... Send us a message, Instagram, probably email us, whatever is easier, with your um, shipping address, and I will get a prize shipped. We'll get a prize shipped out to you really soon. Woohoo! Yay! Okay, now to acquisition slash prizes. Yes. So we'll start with prizes, and I have a few personal acquisitions too. 
Um, and it kind of goes together because let's start with Ryan. Ryan, the yarn hag, who we talked about earlier, sent us a big old box oh my gosh. of stuff for us and stuff for you guys. And in full transparency, I cried when I opened it because this was so incredibly generous and amazing. So she sent a ton of yarn and I'm just gonna kind of run through it real quick and then I'll show you what Kristen and I, what she sent for us to keep for ourselves, which was also so incredibly generous. So nice. So yarn, I'm not gonna go into details of all of it. This is all going in our giveaway by, um, thing. I keep a bag in my yarn room of yarn that's to be given away. So we've got all these guys. This is a mix of fingering, DK, worsted, commercial, hand dyed, um, knit crate, We've got two more. We've got it all. <laughs> yeah, here's, oh, these are pretty. And then she and sent two sets, yet. yeah. Two sets of sock tubes that were already cranked. These are kind of crinkly, but I'm gonna leave them in a package. That's so cool. That is you know so that reminds me of a Zach Morris sweater. Yeah, you I know? know who that is. <gasps> Saved by the Bell? That makes my heart sad. Crinkle, crinkle. And that one looks like Carlton. So I don't know, these might be, of, I think this is sport. So they might be like thicker. I don't know. Um, I'll look. I'll count the stitches eventually before I send them out. And but that's the beginning of what she sent us. Incredibly generous, Ryan. So Thank nice. you so much. These so are not all for nice. the shawl all along. This is gonna go in the closet. They will be distributed in this giveaway, other giveaways, because we have other people makers who have sent us stuff as well for the shawl along. So the rest of what Ryan sent us. Do you want to show what she sent for us? us? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, this skein of yarn by the Rustic Cabin for me. Oh my gosh, look how pretty that is. This is in the colorway Panic in Detroit. It is an 80-20 sock base, high twist, and I love it so very much. So, so good. And then she sent two books. <clears throat> one I'm keeping and one I'm gonna gift to our friend Gina. This is the 52 Weeks of Socks book, which is so sweet. And it's gonna be the perfect coffee table book and I'm so excited, it has so many patterns. Ooh, that one's cool, look at those stripes. It's one of those books that we just always eye yeah. too. It's I've been like, always there. I think Lori has it in mm. store and I just look at it all the time, but have never purchased it, but I love it. I love a good book. I think it's beautiful, so, so good. And then she sent this really, really adorable sock project planner. It's like a blank notebook for sock notes. And I think Jana's gonna love this. Like, it's so good for She's her. She's our friend who makes a note on every sock yes. and then does a checklist and has spaces for you to do that in there. Yeah. So cool. Perfect for her. Perfect. So those are the goodies Ryan gave me. Okay, and guys. I picked these <laughs> ones. This is Arcania Wasco, which I have a few skeins from this, but the color is just so cool. It is. Um, I don't know if that's the colorway called River of Gold. I don't know. I think it's just is the name of the yarn. This is 100% wool and there's two skeins of it and they are just so pretty. I was thinking maybe a muscle bird, but now I think it could be a top. Mm. I'm really leaning more towards garments this year. I noticed so. that in your make nine. You had a lot of garments. Uh, I know. Okay, so these are so cool. And when we were looking at them at first, I was like, these look orange. And Maddie's like, that's pink. And then we turned on the lights and I was like, oh yeah, it's pink. pink. <laughs> Love it. Um, and then these Chagu shorties, which I have been like back and forth adding to my cart on, on Arkansas Yarn Co. all the time. I'm like, do I need them? Do I need them? For ages. For, for like sleeves? Perfect. Yes. I love knitting with 12 inch needles. Max. Um, so this is gonna be perfect. And yes. it's, I think sizes two through eight, and then it's got three inch tips and Four inch? Two inch oh, tips. Oh, two inch tips, yeah. Yeah, so tiny little tips. So she said, these were her needles. She said that they don't really work for her, like, but they don't feel right on her hands, or maybe she doesn't get the right gauge or something, but I, I think they'll them. be perfect. I'm excited. That's super cool. And so, yay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. Thanks, Ryan. That was so sweet, and just, like, perfect. I was just, like, ah, super generous. Yes! <laughs> then, this is our bag of other stuff lovely folks have sent us. So Georgian of the Stitching Plaza has always been a huge supporter of our podcast. She sent us uh, prizes for several giveaways. So, so, so nice. And she sent us a bag. I'm not going to unwrap it. 
um, because I have pets in my house. So anything that comes wrapped, I try and leave wrapped just in case. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is her logo. Look how cute the collars are. I think she said this was a drawstring bag. I was texting her about it. Yeah, they're usually drawstring. I mean, she did send us a zipper one yeah. too, I think, before. So, but super drawstring. cute. So there's one prize. It's like deceptively big too. Yeah, they are. Everything for the prizes, I, we usually just kind of put together packages. So you may get like a bag and some yarn or some goodies or like whatever, but it'll all kind of be spread throughout. And then Ash from Ash Christine Designs and Vessel Stitch Co. Sent along some stitch markers, which are so stinking cute. Love them. When you showed them to me, I was like, did you buy me a present? And you're like, no, these are prizes. I know, I felt <laughs> bad. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, if I had seen these particularly in a shop, I would have bought them for you. <laughs> but um, I don't know, you should enter to win a giveaway and maybe you'll get them. <laughs> well, I am entering two dolls, so. <laughs> exactly. So these are what she sent us. These They're have so like cool. confetti inside and these are little, um, Gummy bears. Gummy bears. I was so gonna say cute. jelly beans. Right. Not correct. I also purchased some stitch markers from Ash when she sent she messaged she was gonna send prizes. It's a, a waffle. waffle. I was like, is that a pizza? Ash messaged she was gonna send prizes and I said, hold off because my cart is full and you're Etsy right now, so let me just check out and then save you some shipping. <laughs> so I purchased her Harry Potter set. So cute. cute. It has a little hat, a butterbeer, a Hogwarts, and a book. And then I purchased um the waffle. I don't know why. I was just obsessed with it. It's so funny. <laughs> like, a waffle? I love it. So cute. Um, yeah, so two sets of stitch markers. And then lastly, this one's so sweet. Um, Southern Stains, the yarn store reached out to us. They are located in Florida. Is that right? I think they're in Florida. Um, because when she messaged me. I think they're nearby where my grandmother-in-law lives. Anyway, Southern Skeins sent us a prize to give away as well as a coupon code. So if you go to southernskeins.com and use the code WESHAREPODCAST, yeah. that'll get you 10% off your purchase. They said it was for us and for our viewers. So that is Southern Skein. Anyone who wants to give us codes, <coughs> I know sometimes Sorry. it's uncomfortable to use our name. So if you just do WSN, that's yeah, totally so cool. easy. Yeah. yeah absolutely um and i'm just gonna open up what they sent this must be dyed in store that's awesome i, that's really, I think that they're hand dyed too like they do hand dyeing there yeah these their are yarn. their own yarn so the mini here is a dk mini 20 oh, grams so cute and this is the it's... color yolo <laughs> i love it this one doesn't have a color in but it's really really pretty it's so cute 75 25 nylon two ply um superwash merino and nylon in this little bag which I love goes this with the, look at that so cute this might be a kit i don't know that's adorable this i'll leave together as a prize because they curated it for us so it's the yarn and the dk mini to give a go in a bag love that have you ever made a dk cozy i was just thinking that <laughs> I was like, you know what I would Great do that? Mind. A DK cozy. I was like, yeah, that's great. I haven't, but I think you could even just use the same Mini Maddie, write a pattern. She's I know, like, right? <laughs> right, she definitely. You just, just comment on something and she'll know. Yeah, exactly. Um, she's probably got that in the works. That's so cool. I don't know. Love. Thank you so, guys. So generous of you guys, of everybody who's sent along stuff. If you want to donate prizes, we're so incredibly grateful for that every time. If you want to send anything our way, just send us a message and we will get you the info you need. And remember to shop at southernsgames.com with the code we share podcast. Love it. I'm going to give that to you so you can put that code in the down bar or whatever. Oh my goodness. That is all the stuff people sent us. I have acquisition. I have one acquisition. I have one acquisition plus maybe a little bit more. Okay. Um, share a pair. Look how pretty. This is the Cozy Cabin Retreat Share a Pair. Um... And I'm doing this with somebody, um, a lovely person on Instagram. Um, I'm drawing a blank on her Instagram name because I'm losing it. Got this and asked if I wanted to share the pair with her. So she sent along this half and I'm very excited to cast it on. I think I'm just going to do the two row stripes on it, but I love the colors a lot. I've never even seen that advertised. It was a quick one. That's crazy. She always has quick ones. Mm -hmm. um, That's what I got. Mandy's love that. Yeah. I have um, this Mace of Skeins, yes. mohair. I got two skeins. I have it. It's uh, icicles is the colorway. 
and it's so pretty it it's just like the perfect blue and i've been eyeing mohair and i don't know why i have no plans for it yet it's just being near it. <laughs> um i just love this colorway so much and i think she's still having a sale on her yeah. um previous because she's going into a new season she likes to die seasonally so anything that she has dyed that's left over is I think usually on sale. She might have stopped her sale already, but she was doing a buy one get one half off for like a week. There, yeah, which was for a crazy her awesome for her deal. ready to ship stuff. Yeah, because she for also him. has her Valentine's Day collection already out. I need to go take a look at it's that. So cute. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. So I got my Macy skeins. I love it. I think I'm gonna pair it with my Johnny Bow dyes yarn and um, make a love note or a ranunculus, since mm -hmm. that's the other one everyone always brags about. Ooh, yeah, not brags. Talks about raves about. That's Enjoy. what I meant. Um, so, who put that oh. together? Oh, hold on. I wonder, is that like stripey or variegated? I think it's variegated, but mm, okay. I don't know. I'm still thinking I want to pair it with my Johnny Bow dies. Maybe. Uh, I bought this too. Okay. I wanted to show this because that was pretty cool. So, I don't have space at my house ever. This is a collapsible wash bucket and it has this little hook spot up here so I can hang it in my bathroom and let it like dry when I'm done so it like collapses completely for blocking for washing and blocking yeah so oh my goodness why am I weak where'd you get that Amazon so yes evil Amazon but also I think it was like $14 love and it's, yeah collapsible wash bucket um I Smart. stick it in my tub so that I don't get you know dirt all over my or you know bathroom hair stuff like that mm -hmm. and I wash my sweater in it. I'm gonna wash all my socks in it. I like that it collapses because I have nowhere to put anything like this. And it has this little hook so I can hang it on the wall in my bathroom. Perfect. I just, it's perfect. So, and I, I will have a link down below, not an affiliate or anything like that, just <coughs> a link because I think it's really cool. And I know a lot of people need space saving. Yes, stuff, so. that's a great idea for Ugh. a blocking bucket. I need to get one. Love that. I have your octopus in there too. I'll keep No, I have it. Oh, you have it. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and then I have this, but do you have scissors with you right here? You? You're a knife. Will you be careful because yeah. that's my hoop in there. My address is on there. <laughs> I got um a package from Chloe Arts and Crafts. Look how cute this is. I love the wrapping. I love wrapping mm -hmm. like this. This is my um needle craft stuff. So I want to do embroidery now. I've never done it. I'm a little nervous because I again I'm not really good with tiny stuff. I feel like so I'm good at it. This is what I got. It is black on the background. Oh. It's gonna have like a black background and it's three succulents hanging. And it's gonna be so cute. What so am is I like a kit that has the fabric yes. in it? Okay, cool. It's got everything in it and it was not that expensive and it came very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's got the instructions, it's got the backing, it's got all of the thread. I think that you need a needle, but other than that, I That's think you're easy, yeah. good. So it's got like instructions on technique. I love. This is the finished product. I don't think all the words are on there. Yeah, it's not. I was like, that would never be able to finish that. But it does tell you what techniques to use where. And so it, here's like the little, it comes with a wooden hoop. This is what I have to do it on, right? I don't really, I have no idea what I'm doing. So if you guys have tips and tricks, help a girl out because I am just not that good. These are all my colors. This is gonna oh be so gosh. pretty. It does come with needles. Perfect. She's amazing. And so it's it's just this kind, traced. I this is my love first it. one. So yeah. I got an easy one. But I think she has other kinds of kits too. So. She has punch needle. Yeah. I've been eyeballing punch needle stuff for ages. I might buy this. This is so fun. So I'm excited. Um the instructions look pretty detailed, so I think that I can't mess, mess it up. It up. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it. Yeah. I felt it about to come out. Yeah. I didn't. I met, okay. So I'm excited. And um, she had so many good patterns on she there, too. She has so much good stuff so on here. So I was initially going to get this for a friend, but then I just decided I wanted it. And so if I really like it, I'm going to get it for her because she just picked up Needlecraft, too. And she has already hand embroidered, like, without any pattern or trace. Her. She just figured out the design she wanted and made an otter. And it was so cute. Um, it was really adorable. Oh my gosh, this is Van Gogh Starry Night embroidery. Look how pretty that is. I just have a feeling I am gonna make a mess of these little flossy. Boys. I was just thinking that. Like, <laughs> it's not oh gonna gosh. be good. This is a little mushroom punch needle. I think I'm gonna buy a punch needle kit from her because I've been wanting to try that, and that's so fun. And it's another use of yarn. And she just has like 
it's so easy everything you need if you're a beginner so like i don't have any of the stuff yeah and so like that's everything i need thank you love that's that adorable. so wish me luck on my endeavors and if you have tips and tricks uh go ahead and message me or something can't wait to see that done right uh -huh. once we never start it i'm scared <laughs> i'll buy one and then we'll have a an embroidery day we'll do it together yeah. i think that's all i've purchased yeah, if you can help me embroider, then I'll be like, you know. No, she no, only has to show me like one time and then I'm, I can do yeah. it. So I'll learn how just to show you. Thanks. <laughs> I so think that's funny. it. But we've been talking for a long time. Ages and ages. And we're going to have to do a modeling show of our sweaters for a second. And then I have to walk. And you have to in walk. In the dark. In the dark with your brother. I think I'm going to walk downtown though. That'll be nice. Oh, You can come if you want. <laughs> I just want to you. you always invite me i mm -hmm. will probably turn you down um i might eat in the daylight sometimes i like daylight except mm -hmm. for sun i don't like sun i'm gonna invest daylight. in like floppy hats i feel like that's like my own so cute in a floppy i wish you could <sighs> knit a floppy hat i was thinking about styling this you know and i just see it with a white turtleneck a black skater skirt brightly colored tights and my boots and a black floppy hat. And a big black floppy hat. And I'll look like a witch. Like a little like rainbow witch. Oh my god, really um, rainbow witch. My, witch. So I was putting it on. My mom took my pictures for me this morning. And she was like, I feel like you need. And I was like, a turtleneck. She's like, a turtleneck. Like that's exactly what she was going to say. So I was like, yeah. She's like, you wouldn't wear a turtleneck. And I was like, I think I might try it. I put one in my Amazon cart. Yeah. I might. I think it'd be really cute. I want a skater skirt for sure. I think that'd be really, really one cute. I don't know if black would go with mine as well. Black goes with everything, but like they have a forest green one on mm -hmm. Amazon for like nineteen bucks. A green forest green. It's dark, like darker that'd than be that. Fun. I, might I think get it'd like be fun. a green and a black skater skirt. I feel like that could be cute. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, chatter. I feel like we've already chatted a lot. We are chatty. Because we were quarantined. This is only like the second time we've hung out in like two weeks, three mm -hmm. weeks. So. It's been rough. It's been rough. It's sad. Yeah. Um, chatter. I don't think anything has gone on other than I quarantined. I walked a lot of miles. I met a lot of cat couch. I did nothing else. I quarantined. Both of my sisters and half of their children had COVID. Oh, so um, my dad probably had it, but won't test because he sucks. Mm. Uh, <laughs> men. Uh, <laughs> Kidding. If you're our, like, our, two male yeah. viewers, we love you. You're probably cool. You're the exception, yeah. not the rule. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to California on Thursday for a funeral for my dad, or my dad, for my friend's dad. Um, and well, it's a memorial service. They're not really yeah. having a funeral, but I was like, well, I'll be there. So I booked a flight like before Christmas, which is like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going. Yeah. Like, and so now I was like, oh, it's now. So I'm going to go for the weekend. It's your knit night this weekend. Are you guys still going to do it? I think so, but I'm going back and forth. It's like, yes, but we're playing it by ear also. Yeah. A couple ladies have said they won't be there, which I totally understand. Um, we did some rearranging up at our office this last week, um, so we have like more open space and stuff, so we'd be able to spread out and social distance more, which I think could be helpful. And um, I just bought like prepackaged snacks if we do do it instead of like a grazing board or anything like that, so less overlap. touchy, less, less touchy, touchy, breathy, breathy. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, I hope we do it, but I also hope COVID goes away. So I, don't know I feel we're... like we're at the end. There's just no way because it's like the symptoms are getting milder. More and more people are getting it. I think that's like the trend, but yeah. it sucks. It really does suck. Um, mm -hmm. I feel very lucky to have not gotten it as far yeah. as people who I've been believe, around. I can't believe I tested negative that many times. I don't understand how that happened, but it's great. I'm yeah. excited. And your husband's doing fine. And he's good. My yeah. whole family's doing fine. Thankfully, he's vaccinated. My husband has some pre-existing like, heart conditions and stuff. So, um, he's one that if he weren't vaccinated, I would have been a lot more anxious and nervous. Um, but he was not hospitalized. He was fine. His symptoms were, I mean, severe, but not horribly severe. Um, could have been a lot worse. So, thankful for that. Eden had to go to an emergency. She's my four-year-old mm -hmm. niece. But she had an allergic reaction right after diagnosis, which is like the face rash thing that kids are getting. Mm -hmm. Gnarly. Don't have yeah. kids, so I didn't know that was a thing. But apparently, it's very common. Mm -hmm. And um, it really scared my family because Eden has lung problems. So, yeah. and she's four. 
This looks so scary. And four year olds can't be vaccinated yet. No. And, um, but yeah, basically all the other ones were, and so they're all fine. But my only holdout family member, my brother, that was unvaccinated, got his first dose two weeks ago. <laughs> so I'm so excited. He's getting his second dose soon. And I just feel so relieved. <laughs> so much better. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad. Because he's a newborn. Mm -hmm. And Gabby got vaccinated while she was pregnant. So I used to give him crap. I was like, even your newborn daughter is vaccinated and you're not. <laughs> you loser. <laughs> so. That's what we were all talking about. We had no idea what was going to happen to like the, the Pfizer babies. Yeah, ever. exactly. We, yes. We, we were both like, let's have Pfizer, Pfizer babies together because we were really bored during yeah, quarantine. Yeah, little babies with tails. <laughs> Emily doesn't have a tail. <laughs> podcast we say that to each other but that's fine i'm keeping it in <laughs> i think people understand that's gonna be our blooper we like, have babies with tails that's i'm so bad but also like <laughs> if there are like crazy you know what i said to my brother the other day i shouldn't say this on the podcast i was like in 10 years if everybody who is vaccinated has like an extra nose or a tail <laughs> like that'll just be an easy way for me to know whose fault it is yeah. that covid was so bad like you don't have a tail screw you dude like you should have gotten vaccinated <laughs> like <laughs> like we're all gonna sue it's fine you're like no that's that guy with no tail yeah no <laughs> i'm gonna come after you if where's I your tail have... bro <laughs> <laughs> oh you get vaccinated that's oh my gosh, that's awful and oh. funny. Um, I'm keeping it in. <laughs> my husband says that my husband says that if he has like crazy side effects, he's gonna sue the military. Like you're an idiot. The military Maybe. didn't make him get it. Yeah, they did. Oh, they did. <laughs> he got it before, but yeah. it is technically a military mandate now. Mm. So he technically they are liable, but also like get over it. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so funny. Goodness gracious. Oh my gosh, I have so much more like vaccine stand up comedy, but I'm gonna hold off. I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm sure we've offended enough people. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> if you've made it this far, you probably like us, kind of. I hope so. Although I think we get like a 2% dislike rate in our statistics. Did you know YouTube um, took away, like, you can't see how many dislikes you get anymore? You can. You can see, like, the statistics. In studio. Yeah. Oh, you just can't yeah. see the number. Mm -hmm. So you go to the studio and you see you your editing. Like, you get a notification that someone disliked you. Oh, I never did that. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you guys for all the love. Yeah. Uh, because we have gotten a far less negative than we, we used to. Yeah, we haven't gotten negativity in a long time, which is <laughs> nice. Probably because we talk so openly about how much we don't care. Like, <laughs> if you don't like us, leave. <laughs> I we've survived a pandemic. Mm -hmm. I don't have the energy for mm -hmm. negativity in my life. <laughs> no, 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 no. Also, no. we're here to admit. It's we're here mostly. We try to not to get like political or like, but we're going to talk about vaccines a little bit because get vaccinated. Yeah, and I'm about to travel and I'm terrified, so um, I'm going to wear a big <clears throat> mask. Big mask. They're saying that the what is it? The N95s, the Korean ones specifically, are like the best mask you can wear now. The K95s, right? Or is something, that, like that. something like that. Um, yeah, that big ass thing the ones that goes stick all out. the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, like beak mouth, and then goes around your head. This and I made fun of him for it. Oh, it's terrible. It They're so uncomfortable. But yeah. dude, that's what I'm gonna do. But I have to breathe through, and I was like, I guess that's a good thing because yeah. the breath can't easier to breathe than if you have COVID. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking about COVID now. I'm gonna bleep it every time you say COVID. And you know why we say it is that like that's not it's not a fear word. It's this is our reality, you guys. I know a lot of people say other words for it. And sometimes when I'm talking about it with my family, I call it the Roni. I do that I feel like <laughs> say other stuff jokingly. The Roni. I, and I begin to calling the pandemic like any other yeah. e word. Like Panorama. Yeah. Like any like I'll Panini. Just <laughs> throw in random. <laughs> Absolutely. I, talk, I was talking to my dad earlier and called it the patchouli. He's like, what the heck is patchouli? I was like, it's an essential oil, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, just any of these things repeat, that's what I thought. But, like, I do take it seriously, obviously. Yeah. But, gotta make light of things to Can't survive. really be afraid of it anymore. It's, like, full-on reality. I mean, I'm afraid of it. Absolutely. Yeah. But, like, not talking about it isn't gonna make me less afraid of it. Yeah. Anywho, I love this cardigan. Me too. I don't know if I'll ever actually wear it because it's so out of my comfort zone. I think you will. Because it's like a light spring cardigan. And it matches your wardrobe colors so well. Yeah. And this does not match my wardrobe colors at all. That's it why it will be a... your soul colors. Yeah, so. It's my soul colors. It's my insides. I need to go for a walk. I need to eat food. We need to leave. We love you. Bye. <laughs> Is that how we end it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it, bitch. 
Do your cats ever do that? I just need sneezing. I'm just gonna put the piano on. I've already done it. I've never sneezed before. Nobby sneezes in my face every morning. Right on my face. And I'm like, in my face! We fight. It's fun. Completely fit. Fist fight with Nobby. It's not a fist fight. <laughs> she would die. She's so tiny. I'm picturing her punching me. Yeah. <laughs>